Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. 2018 Olympic Games Ladies Technical Edition. Welcome back to the show, Doug Haw. I'm Dave hey. Lees. I'm Jonathan Byer. And I'm Doug Haw. And you're wearing black and white because you said you want to referee us? Yeah, the two of you, you know, I, I, you, you have to listen to me. If exactly. I start putting my finger up, you know, I'm going to intervene. Okay. Thank you for explaining because I don't normally watch sports that involve a referee that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I wore a shirt because I thought it would be cute and it's cut off in the camera. But it does say thank you for being a friend. And <laughs> a Mine is Ant and Plaid. I didn't know we were doing a thing. <laughs> I just, you know, I saw it. My sister bought it for me. I don't know why she thought I would like such a thing. But um, I it. it was my birthday the other day. I am younger than ever, you know. So thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yeah. Yes. So and Dave, I can only remember. I can only you remember th those days. Yeah. We want to thank Dave for being our friend. <laughs> well, That's I think some of the U.S. skaters would um, not like to after today. Uh, but let's <laughs> let's start with them. Let's forget the winners, Doug. Let's talk about um, the bottom of the barrel. Let's talk about U.S. figure skating. Amazing. Okay. Who would you, you most to... like to pull from the world championships? Because I have to say, in my heart of hearts, as much as I'm disappointed for the skaters, I think it's really good that these results happen, 9th, 10th, and 11th, because I think that there needs to be a huge reckoning and a wake-up call in U.S. figure skating, and I think it was destiny that this happened because there's it's been going down for a long time sometimes we have one or two skaters at the top that can kind of uh make it look not so bad but i think the depth and there are some structural problems so let's start with karen chen let's start in uh doug as a coach if your skater got to regionals and was claiming boot problems would you have a fit if it happened every year at the regionals, if it happened at regionals, sectionals, the Liberty competition, can skate, the challenge skate. I mean, at what time do you say, figure out your boots or don't show up? You pretty well have to have all your equipment issues taken care of by the summertime. Mm -hmm. And I feel that um, in her case, that what the bigger issue is, is is not even the boots, is the fact that she changed her long program three times. Mm -hmm. And to me, what are you looking for? You're grasping at straws. You know, optically from 5,000 feet looking in on her, it's like this girl uh, has some major issues. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, to me, I don't see, and it turned out there was no success in switching programs. Mm -hmm. Right. Because she was unsuccessful, very unsuccessful. And Necessarily, in my opinion, the programs that have plagued her, because I think of the U.S. ladies, she does have certainly the strongest spins and kind of the, the highest PCS scoring power of the three that were there. My question technically is that delay in her lots uh, that seems to be a thing. So I was curious to get your take on that. There's definitely a delay, you know, in mostly all her jumps, okay. all, especially, especially the toe jumps. Okay. And I feel that, you know, obviously she needs to get in quicker, which I'm sure her coach Tammy knows. But at the same time, you have to address the issue. So maybe you need to call another coach for like, what would you do or a biomechanist in? Because to me, she's open too long. Like she doesn't get into a nice tight backspin position early enough. It's almost like she rotates on the descent of the jump. She like ascends, turns, come out. She goes up, pauses for a commercial, then rotates on the way down. And that's why she lands like a thud at the end of every jump. And they're all thuds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want to ask your opinion on this because for years in the U.S. we know Frank Carroll's technique. If you if you didn't say it, you could see Michelle Kwan would do that triple triple. The first one she would go for distance. The second one she would pop up for height. Karen does the opposite, where the first one is like up and down, and the second one we're praying that it gets rotated. Do you it's believe in that? It's because excuse me, it's because of what you said that clunk. Mm -hmm. So because like her parabolic path in the air is 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 very high mm -hmm. so it's very acute whereas you want to have like optimally take off at 45 degrees to get the most height and the most distance mm -hmm. and in her case because the first one's so big when you land so hard 
then your energy is going down into the ice instead of landing and then getting on that uh, runway that I talked about in the men's event. Like, right. So for her, she's taking off a helicopter pad on her, in her 747, and sh so therefore she needs to really work on, to me, uh, getting into the rotation on the first jump because that's the real cause and the rest is all symptoms. Yeah, so I mean, when you sorry, we find skaters that tend to do that delay, and you're saying the information is inevitably probably being told to her to pull in sooner and things like that. Is that something that she developed as a bad habit over the years, or is that an approach perhaps that she learned early on that is now hard to break? Or I, I'm curious why she might be doing that delay, or if it's if it's something mental, or if if maybe that was just a, a technique thing that's now too hard to fix. Well, I haven't studied her skating long enough, but I know comparing her and Mirai, um, Mirai, you know, won 10 years ago with a girl's body, and now she's learned how to jump with a woman's body, but we all know it took her a, quite a long time because she's finally getting all her jumps called clean. So uh, in in um, Karen's case, I, I would think it's simple similar to, to Mariah's and it's like she hasn't because she was a tiny little girl and it almost looked like her body changed a little bit between nationals and the Olympics and um, she you know looked like she could do a little bit of toning okay. uh, before the world championships. I, I think that that change happened several years ago and it's you know obviously developed over time. I noticed that you know she really was had an injury you know she, what she used to be quite successful in junior grand prix and went through an injury you know right during puberty it was kind of a perfect storm and she's had to readjust her technique the thing is is that since we've seen karen at the senior level this lutz issue we've talked about it so many times on the show obviously her coach is seeing it every day if i were mitch moyer i would be flying someone in like a doug haw like audrey uh Wiziger, someone that can you know work technique work with her you know they talk about you know, how she's friends with Christy Yamaguchi. And that's great. Christy seems like a nice girl. But I would be bringing in Christy Ness or the brain power behind Christy to really be uh, working on this technique. I think if you're a Mitch Moyer, you need to be a good chess player. You need to be putting the people together to fix these structural problems three years in advance so that we don't get to the Olympics and Karen's talking about, well, I tried to rework, rework my triple-triple. At this point, it's too late. It's too late three months ago to be changing this because they have to know and be confident going in. So I found her, um, it, I found it troubling uh, that the interviews she gave because I thought that there was such a lack of proper guidance and preparation uh, from her staff, from whoever the decision makers are. And then the other thing is that um, skaters have talked about built-in excuses, that some of the Americans do a thing where if they are sick, if they are having a problem, they will post the problem on social media before they compete. And instead of going in with the warrior mentality that we're gonna get it done no matter what, Karen was posting pray for me with her boot problems on social media, on Instagram before she competed. That doesn't seem like a proper athletic mentality at the Olympics to me when you're showing your skate like that. But Dave, it's interesting because also as you bring that up, like. <clears throat> on the outside, I don't know the difference between Karen mm -hmm. as an entity or a skater in general versus their team. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it's like, I, I don't also given all the changes in programs, given um, that she likes to choreograph for herself, which on the one take, it's like how interesting and personal, but on the other take, it's kind of like, what's the deal there choreographically that you won't? just work with someone great, I, I'm not quite sure. I wonder how much is her steering all of this despite quality information being given to her. So I, I think it's hard to know which direct, maybe for all we know, someone like Mitch tries and it falls on deaf ears. Well, um, I think someone like Mitch needs to be a little bit stronger then and, and pull things or have stronger meetings or something because if you look, Tammy had one of the most talented boys in the country that we've had in the last 10 years in uh, 2011 with Ricky Dornbush when he came, likely deserved to win those nationals, outjumped everyone, and then he never made it after that. He was one of the best jumpers, and there were a lot of problems in the management of his career, the management of injuries, and so on and so forth. You look at that, you see someone who doesn't change the technique, doesn't change uh, 
who changes the program three times, that looks a little bit like we're having a chaotic situation. Like someone is leading who hasn't been there before and likely needs some sort of mentorship to, you know, in really developing a top skater. Doug? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's hard for me to say to, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not here to criticize um, mm -hmm. Tammy. Mm -hmm. I'm only here to give her support. Mm -hmm. And in, in my opinion, um, perhaps, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with all those issues, uh, you need to, you need to draw in other people. Um, I don't know who, who her support team is. Mm -hmm. um, she, she usually shows up a competition by herself. So I don't know who else she has working with her, her skaters. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, when you have this going on, because she at the end she is talented, so uh, we got we. Your job as a coach is to is to try to coordinate um, all the resource people that you need to create the to to create the great skater. Mm -hmm. So to me, you got to look at that. Like maybe sit back a bit and give an honest hard look because Karen is a good skater mm -hmm. and she just. But right, but your points are well taken, Dave. And uh, she needs to make some changes if she wants to be successful. Yeah. So. I, and then the, the boot company also left a comment on our Facebook because inevitably it makes it look like they make bad boots. Now, they said that Karen has three pairs of skates and chose to go with the one that she was comfortable in, even though that was the one that was broken down. So that's another problem that makes that's a head scratcher, too. So, I mean, who knows where the truth is, if it's in the middle or, you know, what it is there. But I think these are all issues that need to be taken care of. Now, how about Mirai? This is another one that's a real head scratcher to me. Uh, we had a little bit behind the scenes information because someone of our friend was communicating with someone that was with Mirai at the Olympics. Um, and she talked about it uh, in the press that she really felt mentally spent after the team medal. She had done the triple axel. She had won a medal. Um, you know, it, she kind of had fulfilled her goals and found that it was very uh, draining to train the week between the team event and the individual. Now, this is a girl who has experience. And at the end of the day, to interrupt you, sorry, but, you know, she knew what her job was. She knew she had to skate three programs. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, tough it out, um, like get your head up and and charge ahead. So if she's feeling down, then she should be contacting her other people that she's so busy contacting to pump her up and get her get get her motivated for this. And I'm sure her coach Tom Z could have done that too. But it just looked like she maybe was reaching out to the wrong people and fo and lost her focus. But at this level, you can't. So you to me, you can't say that. <laughs> well, I right. think that's another thing about another coach, another example of someone who's thirsting for a top student, but they don't necessarily manage uh, appropriately. You know, we talk about, you know, some of the U.S. skaters left. They left the Olympic Village and they trained elsewhere for a couple of days to really focus. And perhaps if you're burnt out in the Olympic area, you should move between, um, you know, spending the Olympic time. Obviously, everyone wants to be in the Olympic excitement and you only got, you know, so many Olympic opportunities. But I think you are there to do a job. So I, I found that her uh, comments were a little bit um, frustrating because if you talk about, be, if you're not motivated at the Olympics, how are you gonna go home when you really have the post uh, Olympic exhale, depression, letdown, how are you gonna get back up for the world championships in a month? This is not someone that I'm counting on uh, to deliver a good performance at the world championships at this point. Right. And to me, I was also distracted by her comments about dancing with the stars and then seeing her long program with that logo USA on her leg, which was yeah. was, uh, again, another huge distraction when she was can, skating. Can we talk about that for a second? I don't understand what that was. Was that injury tape and she just mm -hmm. kind of decorated it with USA to be cute? That's what I would think. But I'm yes. And then it looked like it was some sort of a sponsorship because she put on so uh, she put on Instagram about, you know, tagging the tape company afterwards so who made the kinesio tape so all very strange very dark and it was it, it kept pulling I, I mean it sounds arbitrary but it kept pulling my focus mm -hmm. to there and i was like this is you're being on the inside of her groin like it would have probably yeah. have been better to be on the outside if she was going to do it like you know you see always stuff on the on the arm or on like a stripe down the exterior side of your leg so to me to have it on inside the groin and right at the top it was um, 
you know, maybe that was to focus on her injury. Or I, I, I don't know, but it was inappropriate mm -hmm. and, 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 and distracting. And then did not serve her well, in my opinion. Yeah. And how about Adam being there with her? She said she wanted him there for the event. I mean, obviously it's allowed. It's just all strange to me. I think that there's a lot of distractions, a lot of... Um, a lot going on, I think, in this situation. It, it just seems strange and a lack of intense focus for the individual event. You know, I mean, yes, the Olympics are a festival, but it, it seemed like, uh, you know, more that they wanted to have a good time. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, you have a job That's to do. For sure, because, because the triple axle was great in the team event. So also, even when they showed the replay, um, Doug, maybe you can offer some insight on, on what exactly happened on the slip off of that. Well, remember I was talking about um, how important it is for any axle jump. It's the back, when you go from the back edge to the front edge. And so to me, she was on the back edge and when she stepped onto the forward edge, her feet were not at right angles. Her feet were almost 180 degrees. So her body weight was outside the circle. So to me, and because of that lean out, she had no chance of hitting the toe or creating the arc on the takeoff, which would, which would um, create the jump. So she stepped on towards her heel and, um, and, her, and, 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 like, and her weight wasn't over her foot. So that made it pop like drastically like that. Yeah. So if if that had happened in a practice session with you, you would tell her to redo it and just be aware of that position. Right. I, and I also. Yes, for sure. And I also think she had extra speed compared to the original uh, the team event. She was really motoring up. OK. Yeah, because she was real. There was no choreography. She was just what I call ranking step, step, step. And she was she was like a freight train with no brakes going down the Rocky Mountains. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's what's interesting to me, Dave, because I, I agree with you where um, sometimes skaters in general, it's best when I don't hear what they have to say at times. So I can just, in, you know, focus on their skating because more often than not, I get a little disappointed the more we hear. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of mistake to me, I didn't know if that kind of mistake was a focus or or lack of concentration leading up to the event or if that truly was a fluke moment. Because it didn't seem like she was suddenly untrained. No, I, I don't think it was, a, I think it was totally a fluke because that's her big ticket item. That's where she's kind of, that's her claim to fame from this Olympics being the first US lady to land a triple axel on this event. So I'm sure she wanted to do it again to kind of um, increase the value of her stock. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, how much do you think that fall that she took in the warm up in the short plays in here? She fell to the wrong side. She fell to the left side, which is infinitely more painful because it's awkward. It's not uh, the way you're trained to fall. And it looked rather painful. And then she, of course, missed the triple axel in the program. So how much do you think that played in, Doug? Uh, that probably was, I would say she probably didn't, um, you know, park that baggage. Like she didn't put that triple axel in a box and put it on a shelf. She probably carried those memories with her and was doubting herself. Because mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's, it's, it's almost 90% self-doubt it's not technique at the competition it's right. it's where your mind is going into the jump and i think perhaps she was thinking oh my god i want to land it i want to land it and she was thinking of the outcome and not the process mm -hmm. now how about brady tonell she it's very interesting to me that they started having all these statistics about jumps that she hasn't missed in so long and that she's so consistent and she has been injured in the past but they this new narrative that she's never missed a jump before. I mean, yes, she is very consistent. We have seen her compete previous years with not as much success. They build her up as USFS and NBC is wont to do. They put all sorts of the national championship pressure on her shoulders. Do you think that it got to be too much for Brady in the, in the individual event? I, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, right, I mean, she probably watched videos, heard them talk about her time and time again, knew the expectations were there. At the same time, I think she does have the best technique. I think she is the fastest uh, spinner of them all, of, of the three Americans. Um, and she pushes with both feet, mm -hmm. like 
through like you look at the two Russian girls to me when they do even a simple crossover they don't get this equal power from both feet Brady does and uh, I think her big thing is, to improve on is going to be her her overall aesthetics in, in the flexibility. Like her split jumps are not 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. Like um, she needs higher extension on her free leg coming up jumps and in simple um, uh, edge edge posing exercises. Uh, but I really think that um, with a real top notch. Uh, choreographer now that she's you know achieved the status that I, I think the potential is there mm -hmm. for her to be great. so um, I'm, I'm kind of a big fan of hers and I think that again it goes back to she's been with you know her coach Denise Myers so long that um, it's 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 a big positive um, obviously she's developed her quite nicely she's got to me the neatest feet in the air, her toes are together. And, and you look at some of these coaches or skaters that have been with their coaches a long time. And of course there are exceptions to every rule, but I think being with your coach really promotes, um, uh, they work on everything. They build a relationship. They, if they know what's going on, then they can produce the result. And like Brian Orser says, if you, you have to be with a, co a new coach a year and a half before you can really have that coach's isms into your skating and make that inflection into their skating and Brady definitely has um, Denise's uh, technique because and, and, Denise is an excellent coach over the years she's produced a lot of good skaters she just not, never had a breakout skater and now I think she does now what about Brady's yeah. arms in the air I find them a little distracting not aesthetically pleasing they're a little bit like wings to the side um, is that something that you would look to fix well, obviously, but to me, I didn't really notice it that bad. Uh, to me, um, arms are a big thing. Yes, for sure. And my whole thing is that people bring their hands in. They don't bring their arms in. Mm -hmm. And when you bring your arms in, obviously, you can rotate faster. Plus, you rotate, you, you get your axis more vertical. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like... Uh, uh, when you have your arms stuck out to the side here, mm -hmm. or a, or a, a, a cue or a stray, um, then it pulls your axis off like a guitar string plucked, and it's and it's gyrates. So if you want to be more aerodynamic, you got it. You, you know, obviously I'm a big fan of of uh, Nathan Chen in the in the seatbelt position, but as long as you bring your arms in, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But it's the kids that bring their arms in that wear their shoulders for earrings. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. So. But Brady, I think it was it was because the stuff that she missed in her the long program, lots, yeah, the, tri the triple, uh, yeah, the lots and the double axle, uh, triple toe, she, they're both pick jumps or toe jumps, you want to call them, and she rushed both the picking, like she didn't have to be, didn't finish the what we call the draw. So that's the bend of the skating knee and the reach back of the free foot. Because you want to maximize that. Everybody has a max, um, an optimal amount, how much they have to reach. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, when I looked at her at the Mon repeats, um, she to me put her toe in too soon uh, mm -hmm. for both toe jumps, and that's understandable because she, you know, just a little bit of anticipation and bingo, there you are, you make a mistake. So. Right. That was that was that was the issue there. And and again, if I make another analysis for the toe jumps, it's kind of like you think of a pole vaulter. So the pole vaulter's you know running down, and if he puts the pole in too close to him, he's not going up over. So there's an optimal amount where the pole vaulter places the pole in front of him. And to me, in Brady's case, she put the pole in too early, so she picked too soon. Mm. She wasn't finished that sweeping half half uh, a circle arc that I talk about mm -hmm. before in the in the men's event. In general, for her free skate, it just seemed like the knees weren't bending as much as I'm used to, and I don't know if that's how her nerves were affecting her. I know it's a bit of a cliche to just say more knee bend, <laughs> deeper knees, or whatever, but uh, that seemed to be missing for me, especially in the Cinderella program. And I don't know if that then affects that kind of stuff. Oh, or oh, that's a stiffness I mean, you need stiffness. your knees to jump, and the other thing is is right here your trapezius muscles. You know, they that's where you, most kids take your the tension. So if I'm ever uh, in a position where um, you know, I, I when I'm working with these athletes before they skate, I try I try to constantly rub their shoulders 
um, just to kind of keep them relaxed. Because mm -hmm. once you lift your shoulders up, your center of gravity goes up. And of course, the higher your center of gravity is from the base of support, the more unstable you are. So, and then if you don't bend, obviously you don't go down, so you don't have any anything to give. Like there's no coil down to spring up. Mm -hmm. So again, your your point is is well taken, um, Jonathan, because you have to bend your knees. You have to coil down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about Gabby Daleman. Uh, she's someone you know a little bit from your camps. Uh, right. We've seen her have great performances. We've seen her have rough skates. I've never seen Gabby Daleman perform the way she did in that free skate. Um, what happened? Uh, to me, I mean, I wish I was there and knew what was going through her head, but it was because uh, she proved, she did a good long in the team event. So she, you know, she, and, and of course she did that amazing skate, uh, the Canadian national championships to defeat Caitlin. Uh, but to me, it's just, I, I would write it off as one of those out of body experiences. And I just think that she, it, it, from what I know of her, I bet she was in her head going for, I'm gonna, I can get the bronze medal, I can do it, I can do it. If Caitlin's third, I know I can beat her in the long, so I can get that bronze medal. And again, she was thinking of the outcome and not the process, like taking each jump one at a time. And, and, and for her to miss that triple toe, triple toe, as we know, is like, you know, her American Express card. She, you know, usually has it in her back pocket. She doesn't leave home without it. And... Uh, she for she must have went through her head when she missed it in the long like oh my god here I go again and then it really was oh my god because the rest is history so I'm I'm gonna write it off as as just one of those bad skates in your career you know and I'm sure at Worlds she'll bound bound about or come back quite strong. Um, you know we've always talked about how amazing that triple toe triple toe is of course knowing that by including that she's really robbing herself of other other triple triple combinations later in the program also um, but you know it, it's our understanding that maybe she's been practicing the quad toe in harnesses and sort of things like that and I just didn't know if anyone ever starts to try that kind of thing, if you ever find that it jostles with their regular triple. Like when Mariah really first started bringing back the triple axle into her repertoire, was it messing with the double axle? Or when people are beginning to start with quads, does that mess up their triple toes ever? Well, I would, I, I don't know, but I would say she hasn't worked on the quad toe for a while okay. because it wouldn't be the focus at this time of the year. And, yeah. uh, um, uh, but I know that she used to do triple let's triple toe and she used to keep missing it or the toe the triple toe on the on when she did it with the lutz the second one was always kind of underturned so when she would warm up every day and do these you know magnificent toe toes uh, that that's when they finally realized the coaching team that you know why don't you go with the sure thing so to me at the end of it got her a bronze medal at world sticking to toe toe something easy. So um, that would be my take on that. Okay. Gabby Dielman to me seems like a firecracker. She looks someone who responds to emotion. So I have a feeling we'll see a very determined skater at the World Championships. I just have oh, yeah. a defeated one. She'll she'll use it as inspiration. You think? Okay. Oh, totally, totally. She will. She'll come out with her guns a blazing at Worlds. Yeah. Let me. I'm just. I'm excited for her. I'm excited for her because I think she'll be great. She is the one skater that I'm like, you know what? She can skate to Carmen. She has a, a lot of spit and vinegar in her. You know, there's a lot of fire there. And I think that that's interesting. And, 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 and I come back to what I love about her is after you see the two Russian ladies that were the gold and silver medalists, then you look at Gabby and there's somebody that can skate. Mm -hmm. You know, she's got power. The other girls, you know, it's like there's no power there. I'm sorry, there's no power. So to me, when it comes to the big conversation about Caitlin Osman, uh, she should have won. There's yeah. no question, she should have won. The Olympic motto is faster, higher, stronger. Well, she was faster than the other girls. She spun faster than the other girls. She uh, strong was uh, stronger than the other girls. Uh, you, you can see that whether it's, and, and you look at, again, crossovers. When the other two girls had crossovers, their arms were flailing. When Caitlin had them, it looked like she had a, a, a you know a tensor bandage between her hands because her arms were 
perfectly parallel to the ice, fingertips reaching for the wall. And so therefore, she was over her feet. She got a lot of power from those crossovers. The other girls were pushing with one leg and um, a lot of upper body movement. Yeah. So faster, higher, uh, and higher the jumps. Like, I again, I look back this morning and you look at the combination jumps that K Caitlin did, whether it's the, the two, the, the triple flip, triple toe, whether it's the double axle, triple toe, or whether it's, or whether it's the three jump combination, like she lands everything with speed. Mm -hmm. And the other girls are landing there, like they're po posing for the, for the pho photographers, <laughs> a standstill. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, and then she was able to carry off the, the whole character of the swan. Mm. So, uh, you know, but Medvedeva was totally into it. Yes, for sure she was. And Zagatova, you know, she put her, you know, she, we, we all know I'm sick of hearing she backloaded her program. Like, yes, yeah, so what? What I, what I would be upset with with Medvedeva is why didn't, you know, she takes them, they take from the same coach. She knew it was going to be after European that, Really, that's why she won Europeans was because she backloaded her program. I would think maybe uh, why don't you change my program so you can backload it too? Yeah, I, I don't know, but I, I guess that if I was a Terry, I would think that she would have thought that the component scores were going to uphold, and as we know, it didn't. So, well, whenever you see someone like Zagitova who hits along after long after long after long, and if they're Russian, those marks go up throughout the season. The consistency, totally. Everything. totally. That's that's what co that's what cost um, uh, Caitlin was because she didn't have the consistency, so nobody was prepared for that. You know, there was like two judges. I think um, in my notes here, two judges had her the highest in components and um, uh, and and gave her a lot of high marks. She know? was in a different. She was really in a different category. I think. Uh... I think everyone viewed her as going for the bronze rather than the gold, and I think that's what really hurt her here. I thought that she had an exceptional short program. I thought that when you look that's at... That's most outraged, Dave. I agree. I think that her short program is her better program. Um, I felt that her short program really had the most character, it had the most verve, and it, to me, was the performance of the night that night. Um, I think Medvedeva is... Um, an artistic skater in a sense, but I think that it's, um, the music is not very special. It's not very dynamic and it's kind of background that you can do all of those, you know, they do a lot of clutter in the Russian programs. They do a lot of edges. They're not on very big lobes. Osman has very big lobes. And to me, the style of skating that I think is more difficult is really how Osman does perform. She skates with a lot more speed, a lot more power that's harder to control. So she's a risk taker because yeah. when you go faster, it's the greater risk. So then it should be rewarded. Right? Um, and I think, um, you know, they're not taking the flat. So let's talk about Medvedeva's flats that they do not deduct for. Um, That's, yeah, she does do pretty good on the flats because yeah. she gets uh, she had three threes and six twos on a flats. And again, to me, it was obvious. But at the same time, Caitlin has a flats too. Uh, so, uh, but unfortunately, she didn't skate it very, or land it very uh, proficiently in the long. She so she had, out. yeah, yeah. So, um, but at the end of the day, to me, uh, if I was uh, on the ISU technical panel, to me, we they got to start giving zeros for flatses, not exclamation marks. Mm -hmm. right. Give the big fat zero so the coaches work on the less. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, and and until they give big fat zeros for for flatses. Nobody's going to correct it. Mm -hmm. Right. Nobody, you know. And as a technician, how offensive is a person's flutz to you? Because you know we see varying degrees of reaction. Some kind of are just like, well, yeah, it's kind of flutzy. But some people are very adamantly like, no, this is not correct. <laughs> this is, this well, is the. The, the flutzes that you we saw at at the Olympic Games were very, um, you know, gray. I'll say they weren't like you know, overt, uh, inside edges, but at the end of the day, they were like, so, uh, but to me to, to not even, um, like have an exclamation mark on Medvedeva's lats is, is shocking, you know? And, um, cause they certainly put it every time on Caitlin's mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I just think that, you know, you need to, you, the coaches, if you have a flats, 
you need to deal with it or else you need to ignore it and not put the jump in the program. So don't you think that that's a, is that reputation? Because if the caller is looking at replay, how does the caller not see Medvedeva's Lutz if he is seeing or she is seeing Osman's Flutz because they're trained to look at the same thing? I know an inside edge, you know an inside edge, uh, Jonathan knows an inside edge. What, you know, what's, that's reputation. And to me, that starts to get to a point where that looks um, almost like malfeasance. You know, like that's a little bit more than just reputation for me. They're protecting who they think the winner is going to be. And sometimes also, Caitlin specifically, I don't understand if, if her, obviously it sounds absurd, but the fact that she's jumping in the opposite direction somehow skews everyone's views for it. Not that it should, an inside edge and an outside edge will, I mean, it's just as clear in one direction or the other. I just feel several times Caitlin has maybe been a bit more, um, I don't know. Nitpicked. Yeah, nitpicked. Because, and it could be somehow because the jumps just look a little bit different. I don't know. I don't know. They do, but I, I, I just think they, they tend to ignore the Russian girl. Mm. She, I think it's, look... Go back and watch 1988. It's Katerina Witt's figures. And Sonia Bianchetti even says it in her book. She said that the marks for Katerina Witt's figures were always criminal, but that she was the big star of the sport, and therefore it was okay, because they had to allow her to uh, win, you know. Don't get me going on figures at the World Championships, because I was there for too many with figures and saw how the marks were manipulated in those events, and it was shocking. Mm. But... So yeah. asking about figures, is the figure and the slowness of developing the skating skills and the proper lean the reason why we didn't see the Flutzes back then and we see them now? Is it the fact that these skaters aren't learning the proper mechanics at a very fundamental level and they're rushing? Uh, no, I think it's because you're adding the rotation. Like, let's face it, triple Lutzes didn't really, the first one was really um, Denise Bielman. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we probably didn't see a lady do a Lutz until that was 81. I'm trying to think of... Uh, Liz Manley, Midori Ito, I would think, around there. Yeah. Uh, those, those people, Liz yeah. Manley definitely had a Lutz, a, a true Lutz. Um, but I think if, if for most, uh, especially girls, because girls tend to Flutz, is because A, their hips are wider mm -hmm. and there's that anticipation of rotation. So when they start to move their upper body before their lower body, mm -hmm. uh, then you get, and because their hips are wider and their shoulders are narrow, then you get the inside edge. You get the change of lean, which creates the edge. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's that's what really causes it, is that is the anticipation of rotation. Mm -hmm. So. To me, I do a, a simple little, like I say, press, meaning like press on the ball of the, say, your right foot. Mm -hmm. And you press, then pick, then pull. Three Ps, press, pick, pull, so that you pull last, so that you, you try to get, establish that edge by putting all your weight on it and leaning. Then you do the tap so that you feel your feet draw together and then get your arm in. So do you mean so, press on the left foot, pick on the right, then pull? Oh, sorry. I was jumping like Caitlin Osman. Okay. <laughs> That's how okay. I do it. I'm not so you, you press the skating foot. Okay. doesn't matter. I'll say it either way. So you press the skating foot to establish your weight down into the ice, to coil down, to bend flexion at the metatarsals, ankle, knee, hip. Mm -hmm. Get down lower, coil down, whatever you want to call it. Then you, you, you reach back to pick, mm -hmm. put the tap the pick in and then pull so that it's it's a little more to me um biomechanically correct how about the because, lippers what do you what is that is that the same thing in reverse or what's going on yeah the lippers it's the same and this is where you're talking about the the people that do a, a lots instead of a flip right mm -hmm. yeah because to me you establish one feeling and then you uh you automate it and you do it for you end up doing it for both jumps like uh, yeah. So, and do you find that it's, but it's easier to correct a, a flip? I oh. think uh, a lip. It's easier to correct a lip than uh, a flats. Okay. Because you can rotate. It's easier because your weight is on the your free side is on the inside of the circle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm on my left foot, 
and I'm going, and, and my right free side is inside the circle. So I can lean in more to create that edge. Mm -hmm. Whereas left, your body parts are on the outside of the circle. Okay, so I'm on my left foot, I'm on the outside edge. Um, in order, you have to really lean, okay? But it's really easy to drop like your picking side on the way through. And that's what most people do is instead of their arm coming closer to their body and staying up, they drop it down like they're going bowling or pitching a ball. And then the whole right side collapses when they pick. So they have no support in the, in the newly established skating side. So that's what you, have, what you have to work on. You have to work on, you know, picking and keep and just without a tapping and pulling up without rotation. And, and you, the skater has to start to feel the, the outside edge to create to uh, on the lats and you've got it there's a, a you know a bunch of exercises a coach can do but you 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 have to be creative and you it's establishing a feeling you got to feel the outside edge at the end of the day the skater has to feel the edge and unless they feel the outside edge you cannot you can't do anything else it's has to start with the edge before you can manipulate the body and doug do you find this happens at an early age that people just one comes more naturally and inevitably that one becomes overdeveloped and, and that tends to be the one they favor yes and it's ignored you know nope. because right on the test system when little kids are doing the half flats they're doing half flats and the judges are check that's fine hmm. right so so how about the russians what do you find that they do spectacularly well is it the backspin position is that the key to a Terry to Baritza's girls. Obviously, she favors girls that are very, very slight, very, very thin, uh, and they do well. To me, it looks when Nevitova skates that she's about three inches too tall and she's hunching more. It looks like it was much easier for her, and now everything's a little bit more of a struggle um, than a couple of years ago. What do you find that they do well? Is it the, the tightness of the rotation in the backspin? Yes, totally. Their 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 feet are together, and I'm talking. Their toe, baby toes, are together, and their heels are apart. I mentioned that in the men's event too. Like that's if you want to spin fast, you have to have your your legs have to be extended, mm -hmm. and your free leg is turned out slightly into the direction of rotation. Mm -hmm. And those girls are masters at that. Masters. So in the past. The Terry's yeah. girls have not survived puberty. That is one of the things that has really been a criticism. Uh, we saw it with Lipnitskaya. As soon as she started to develop a little bit, the technique completely went. Uh, she had a different developmental coach, and you know she had a slightly different technique, but she was still with the Terry for quite a time. Uh, Paulina Shelapen in the past had this, a similar problem. Do you think these girls will survive puberty? Are, is their technique better than we've seen from them in the past? I think their technique is wonderful. I'm just wondering what they do off the ice with their with their doctors or their trainers uh, because I, I isn't it interesting how their bodies all of a sudden change after they have a big victory? I, I don't know if it's what they're administering to these kids, but um, you know uh, immediately uh, um, like Yulia Lipnitskaya, her, you know, she got to be a big girl. Mm. And so did, um, oh my God, it just drew a blank, the Olympic champion. So Nikova. <laughs> Speaks volumes. <laughs> well, I mean, some of that can also be said that I think that uh, we saw in a documentary how open these girls, uh, Zagitova and Medvedeva, a year ago were talking about starving themselves and how much they control the diet. So how much is that the body changing as soon as you stop the intense training? I mean... We've seen in the, in the gymnastics world, uh, there have been a couple members of teams where, you know, it's, it's rather hard, but they go on Dancing with the Stars and they're not in the same training, not in the same diet. And they then say that the public is talking about their weight gain, but it's one of those things that <laughs> everyone can see. It's not sustainable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not competing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, so what's the question? Um, the question is, is, are you saying that it's the diet? Are you saying that it is pharmaceutical? What is your uh, analysis here? Or suggest? I, I, I'm going to go out on, a, out, out on a tangent here and saying it's pharmaceutical. Okay. You know, um, 
it just it's it's like you have to understand why, why does the why is Russia producing all these little girls? It's yes, I'm sure they're yes, they're all together. They take them away from their parents early. The parents aren't allowed in the ring. Um, it's all of that. It's it's uh, all of that. But to me, it's it's too much. It's too freaky. It's the, there, there's too much. There's too much. They're all too similar. Mm. Oh, you know? so I don't know. The weight loss for Medvedeva is a little striking to me when you look at last season to this season. The ankles were setting. That's why I really. I to was me, like, it was oh. all elbows and knees. Now it was a little. It's too thin, and it to me it was troubling. And it doesn't produce. You look at Coster. What you love about her is the beautiful line. But when the line of the body goes in at the joints, it's a little unsettling. You know. Hey, plus, then you look at Russia's whole results at this Olympics. It's like shocking. <laughs> like, like, what are they? Are they tenth or eleventh? Like, it's shocking. So, to me, again, actions speak louder than words. You know, there's a reason why they didn't let them come in as a team. There's a reason why all those all those other athletes were drugged. So, if all those other athletes are drugged, why wouldn't the skaters be too? Well, I think it's also interesting is that why every time a Russian has an injury, do they go to the same doctor in Germany that's connected to Usain Bolt, that's connected to a lot of people where there is a lot of suspicion. Uh, he uses a drug called Octavagen uh, on his website that you can see. Uh, and I think it's very troubling that every gymnast, every skater goes there. And we heard that after Medvedeva had the crack in her foot that she also went to Germany. Now, if someone has a problem with their foot, you think that they would rest it off the ice. Why are you going to Germany? To me, you think Russia's a big country. They like to tout how superior they are in so many ways. But then they pull the the card that they don't have this same medical care. But if everyone's going to the same doctor, to me, that's a red flag. That's something that... Yeah, you, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I agree. You, I said it all. <laughs> I mean, Komova goes to the same doctor that Medvedeva goes to. That, I mean, there's a little uh, a strangeness there for me. I just, I question that. That's... Oh, uh, I can tell you Yuzu didn't go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yuzu was off the ice for, yeah. Yeah. For a much longer period of time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Now, this is a total random question and brings me to um, everybody's third favorite Russian, <laughs> Maria Sotskova. Um and, you know, a lot of times in these ladies' events, uh, we see the half-loop combos, right? And yes. I, I am floored by the varying aesthetic of the half-loop in the middle of these two triple jumps or whatever they're choosing to do. Some of these half-loops are just downright the ugliest things. Draggy and, oh And it was like, Half loop, who knew there could be such a wide array of technical approaches to a half loop? And I'm curious, some are thuddy, some are huge and open with the legs, some are tight and clean. I'm just curious to get your take on um, what, what you use as criteria for a correct one or an incorrect one and how that may be informing the success of the next jump. Okay, well, when you do uh, the three jump combination with the half loop in the middle, you have to leave the free leg in front mm -hmm. and extend it in front. And you have to leave it there so your thighs are basically together at the top and your upper body twists to do the jump so that you turn your upper body, then the hips catch up in the air and land backwards on the left back inside edge. But most people, when they make the air, is their free leg swings wide, so then it's the old dog chasing his tail syndrome, and they land, yes. they, land, they land so heavy outside their body, then they gotta readjust to get their weight over their foot, and by this time, you've lost momentum, and you totally have to force it, or you do like Sutskova and do a double instead of a triple because you, your weight's not over your foot. So, right. uh, Radionova uh, has that problem, too. She has one of the ugliest half loops, I think, that we have seen. And Anna uh, Pogorolia also. Oh. Pogorolia, I don't remember. Well, Anna, yeah. 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 She wasn't here, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, some of them, it's just like, wow, my eye is really drawn to what basically looks like a stag jump. Her body something. also changed after she was no longer a world team member. I would just say that was another right. one. It was like, oh, they so stopped what, funding you. 
Yeah. And when you go back again to the three jump combination, it has to be kind of like in a straight line, like a rock skipping across the water, you know, and most people, they it, when they land the first jump and they go to take off for the for the loop, they it's it's uh, they change they change their lean too much too, and then they um, so the pattern changes and it becomes a U turn instead. So by the time they are are taking off for the third jump, they're almost back where the first jump started. Okay. So you have to look. It's big, big, big with me the pattern. So you have to in your mind you have to think of jumping in a straight line, but of course you're on an arc. But you have to think of jumping in a straight line in order to keep the momentum going from on the takeoff of the half loop to the landing of the half loop, jump in a straight line in your head. So speaking of well, loops, um, one of the things we didn't see for about 10 years under the IJS was that we never saw triple lutz, triple loop, triple flip, triple loop, because the, the loop would always be called under rotated. And Zagitova really has changed that by the fact that... Syndrome. Remember, it's just Samantha Cesario. She always used to try that triple loop, triple loop yeah. in the program. And even no matter how close she got, she never got credit for it. Yeah. So what is Zagitiva doing differently than all of her predecessors and the Mikiandos and everyone to get that full rotation on the loop and get it called cleanly every time? Well, I think when she lands the first jump again, her free leg is extended. And then she pulls the free leg up into a perfect H position on the takeoff, like so she really lifts up so that I always say thigh high okay. to the sky. So she lifts that thigh up, okay, so it's, so it, that body part stops, it transfers momentum to the rest of your body, like so your thigh goes up, the body comes up, you catch up to that thigh, then you turn in. So it's a transfer of momentum, mm -hmm. and I think she does it really well. So to me, all of those all of those skaters that want to do a loop jump, you, you you land the first jump. You have to extend the free foot forward and then lift the thigh up. And I'm talking the knee as high as your hip, not just a little flexion at the knee. It's all your hip flexors. So in the front of your hip, your hip flexors are completely engaged to lift your thigh up. And your free leg at this point, your your free foot has to be underneath your free knee. So it's a, like the eight, like I'm talking the H here. You, you get me? So and, and the free foot position, it would be like if it's touching the ice, it has to be on an outside edge. So your free leg is kind of cocked so that uh, it's slightly rounded. So you feel it in the groin and you feel it on the outside of the free leg because you're shortening all the medial muscles and fascia on the inside of the leg so you feel a stretch outside your knee and then your free foot is is like on the outside edge in the air and that will will that position and the elevated will get you a good loop and and i watched it uh many times on, on zagatova's and she does it masterfully so but that's technique so that's i do a better loop as a second jump than by itself because I'm a little special. And so are you saying that I have wonderfully high thighs that are pulling together? Well, um, I always teach a, a double loop. First you do single loop, double loop because you need the rhythm, the down up because when ki kids are learning a double loop by itself, they off they forget they have to bend and all they do is pull. And so you, when you learn to do the loop first, when you land, there's that complete um, action of the free leg, the bending. So you get that rhythm of for the takeoff. All use all those joints, bend down and spring back up. And so for you, Dave, you probably needed to to use all your joints on the takeoff of the first jump. So that's why for you, when you do it as a second jump, you land and you're naturally going to bend. And so that is going to re re result in a, in a rise. And I have so beautiful gonna, thighs, oh, right? Okay. That can... <laughs> and I have beautiful thighs, right? That are just... That's powerful. Yeah. Powerful. Those Polish thighs. Just give him what he wants. Just give him what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Um... Um, Hey, just going back really quickly to Maria Soskova. She's never the, gotten this much attention. This is her the biggest day of her life, you know. Exactly. Um, so can you remind me, just off the top of my head, she doubled the sow cow after the half loop. And what was the first jump? Soskova? Yeah. No, yes. Yeah. Triple that's triple toe, which was good. He's well, talking no, about the half loop sow combination. Yeah, what was the first was it a part flip? of that? Oh, sorry, triple flip, half loop, double sow. 
Okay, because I'm just curious in some of them when it's like, I wonder why you needed the half loop at all for some but, of them that are doing. Because well, you have to certain... change your feet because you're Lurelina on the right foot and the sal cow you need to do. For yeah. that particular one to get for get, to get the extra jumps, but sometimes I feel like we see half loops in times that maybe we didn't need them. I don't know. I, it seems an unusual choice at times. It's easier. It's easier. To and just normally to... it should be easier. Like you should. Most coaches should teach after the kids do an axle and a double sow cow. You should teach axle half loop double sow just to teach the rhythm and to learn the free foot position in front so that okay. they learn d double doubles easier or they learn combinations easier. Okay. Um, so to me, that uh, that's why it's allowed is because uh, she, you know, you can only do, you can't, you can only do uh, like a double axle triple toe next. You can't do two triple triples, right? right? Unless it's in a series and not in a combination, I believe. Okay, right? well, let's talk about Jonathan's favorite skater, Satoko Miyahara. Doug, well, not in a technical edition. <laughs> what not. is going on on those toe jumps? I, we've heard that she learned to to jump the other way as a child and that they had to change in Japan because no one's allowed to be a lefty. What on God's green earth is happening with those jumps? Can it be fixed? Should she go to the shows now and have a beautiful time? What What is happening? Hey, she was fourth at the Olympics, you know? Um, that's not too bad. And if we just look at the track record, everyone who finishes fourth at the Olympics has really great futures. <laughs> here. Grace, Gracie Gold. All just, I feel like so many of like skating's biggest heartbreaks that were fourth at the Olympics, but okay. Okay, so to me, um, She's still a beautiful skater. She probably had one of the best programs. Uh, the jumping, I think that's what what you've got is what you're going to get. I don't think it's changeable, fixable. She, to me, I I, she, I used to think she cheated everything. I, I really I watched intensely. She did not cheat. She was lucky, but there's no dynamics to her jump. So uh, how she can get higher more than a than a plus one is beyond me. Because she would only get that because she's got a run coming out of out of the jump. But as far as the dynamics go, there's no way she should get ever higher than plus one. And the difference here is you're saying with people like Brady and with people like Karen, you see the potential within those jumps to cultivate that. But you're thinking this is this this is really the best she can offer. Yeah, I think it's the best. That as good as it gets. I don't think that she is going to ever be a leaper. I like to do a high explosive dynamic jump. Will never happen. See, that's why I want to put her in a show under spotlight, center ice, doing a layback. That's what the public wants. Give it to them. Have her be the star. Okay. Have her do a spiral. Ice dance. Make her be a Japanese ice dance. I, I don't think she wants that. I think she no. wants to get a, a medal. At, she already has one at the World Championships, right? She was second two or three years ago. Exactly. Don't we all? I would like one too. But I think um, <laughs> it's going to be really hard, is what I'm saying, because of, of the jumps. You know, there, yeah. as we've seen, there are, uh, Trusova is doing a quad, a quad sal. She's working the quad toe. I mean, there are girls coming up in the pipeline, even in Japan. And right. most of Japanese girls, the yeah. Wakaba, if, I, I mean, the Wakabas, if she especially starts honing that triple axle, the Rika Kahiras, the Marin Hondas, yeah. even bless her heart, Mai Miharas, they're all right there. Especially yeah. because the components aren't being differentiated. Because when you see Medvedeva and Zagitova get nines, as you said, for crossovers that aren't using both feet, for the dragging, uh, I think that when they're not being differentiated and we're seeing Don Quixote get the scores that it was getting and Sotoko doesn't score two points higher on each component than they are, it becomes a jump game. And Plus, you know, she's, she's, I, I think she must be smaller too. Oh, yeah. So when you're, when you're smaller, you, you have to skate bigger. And I, I don't think she's, you know, so she just looks so small. You can't see how, how really how beautiful it is. And for her size, she does skate well. She she is uh, has edges. She has lean. I think her program is brilliant. I just think that she's never going to get the power to um, create the jumps because it's she doesn't have that natural spring. When she you was know? in the, I noticed in Boston that when she was skating, it was very beautiful. But when you, she's on the warm up ice with all these other girls and Gracie's jumping and Ashley and you know it looks like it's a child on the ice with Helga and Olga. You know, I mean, it just looks like it's women. Yeah, she looks 
out of pos- out of place. Yeah, it's, the skating it, looks smaller, you know, and it, but well, it's beautiful and it's quality and it's everything. But yeah, yeah, it's. Like when you just see her jump, you think, "Oh my God, this is like one of the best skaters in the world." It's not until you see her put a, do a program, then you realize what she has to offer. But the jumps are the are probably the smallest in the event. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You know, and that's not mincing my words. Mm-hmm. They, they're pretty small, but she does them, and then she gets them clean. So everybody, calm down. <laughs> How about Sakamoto? What do you what do you think about her potential? Um. She needs a date with Grace. Uh, she needs more, more like her. It's like you have Satomoko who who is has all everything that that uh, Mihara doesn't have, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so she is just lacking grace and finesse. Mm-hmm. So she need, she needs um, to work with uh, somebody. Uh, a, a top-notch choreographer. Uh, I don't know who I, I forgot off the top of my head. I don't know who did her program last year. The same person who did um, Brady's program, her free skate, I believe, did uh, oh, Sakamoto's. French, yeah. A French gentleman. But not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think if I was, you know, uh, Japan, I would have her in a ballet class. I would have her. You know, doing something because she's got to be much lighter on her feet and softer in her arms. And uh, so, yeah, that would be it's not like that would be her focus for next she, year. She's right? reminiscent of Yoshionda in the Grace Department. You know, it's uh... she's better than her. But... <laughs> <laughs> that is. Yeah. that, that Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Judge, you're supposed to let that one just like ride off, you know, like one of those Dave comments. You just let the. Like... Yeah, yeah, that was that was like you just threw a pail of ice water on me. <laughs> no, no, no. I remember Yoshianda. She would have. No, no, I better behave. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next. 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 <laughs> well, overall, how would you have ranked it? How would you have ranked the top ladies? That's been you know such a, a point of discussion. Uh, well, well, I would have had, and I'm, again, this is not about have, being a Canadian. This is about being loving skating and trying to be objective. And to me, Caitlin Osman won the short and the long. Even with the mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, because she gained so much on, on um, again, higher, faster, stronger, you know, one little air. And plus, it's like she landed the lats and stepped forward and did like, you know, a, a kind of a, a lunge position. Yes, to save it. But, you know, uh, when you feature. look at the other girls that are folding up like card tables on takeoffs and landings, um, Caitlin landed every jump with a straight back and had speed coming out. Like, just go back to the three jump combination. Like, again, she landed that third jump and she could have kept going and done a fourth or a fifth. So, uh, Choreographically, artistically, athletically, Caitlin wins. And then I would have, I would have had uh, Medvedeva second because of the performance. Mm-hmm. I really feel that yeah, uh, interesting. Um, and we'll get into it when we when we have our choreography show, or however you want to call yeah. it, David. Right. But and then, but she left me completely cold. <laughs> and I'm as and I root for Medvedeva in a way because. I enjoy what she's done for this sport, and I, I kind of like her energy. But for me, it just fell totally flat. I missed the 9/11 program. I have to tell you, I felt more in the 9/11 program and in the Deaf program that I did with the train coming and the Anna Karenina and the changing yeah. of the. This was a, a mismatch. This was not a culmination of her work. It was kind of. A I kind of love the ending pose where she's like this, and I'm like, Ugh, girl, yes, you know this program. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but. What do you think about our, our girlfriend, Carolina Costner? We've been with her for a long time since Katarina Vitt was competing. I think she is lovely. D- d- she pulled out the triple Lutz. Uh, Beautiful. She one. gave such a clear edge on that, didn't she? She exaggerated that, so it was very clear. There was no question about her outside edge. <laughs> that, was, that should be on an ISU um, video, instructional video. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was brilliant. And Where she has didn't it use been to, for three years? Where, and and she did, and she didn't used to have that. She didn't have a to me. I, if I remember correctly, she had a big flats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so there you go. That to show you that it is correctable. But you know, she probably spent a lot of time on it. And um, 
uh, and unlike most skaters in in, a, in our country or in Canada, they only want to work on it a little bit and then they want to move on. They want to move on in their lesson. It's like, no, it's going to take some time to recreate this. Like you, you've automated it one way and now you've got to recreate that feeling another way. So it's the old adage of teaching, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, rings true. So if you want to do it, you've got to break the skill down into many, many parts and it takes a long time. And obviously when she went to Misha and maybe he broke it down and he, because that is a beautiful lutz. Do you think she yeah. can do a triple lutz, triple toe by the next Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> well, only if she does that beforehand. Yeah. But, you know, beautiful. I mean, I'm sure when you do the choreography part, you will, uh, I mean, she's, she's real, just a breath of fresh air. She's everything that you want to dream about watching skating. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I was unfortunate. I didn't think lightning was going to strike twice. I didn't expect her to medal here because it's, you know, it's very difficult against the current field, the current judging, everything. I think it wasn't going to go her way. But... Yeah, there's no room for it, for error. Yeah. No room for error. Yeah. So, Doug, what was your moment of the ladies' event? Well, if you had to pick one jump, one? Uh, if I had – my moment would be Caitlin's triple flip, triple toe at the beginning of her program. When she landed, I was – it was like a double clutch in my pearls. It was, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> How about it was like, I was so happy because I know that, you know, she's missed, she missed it twice. So I was really, really happy. How about you, Jonathan? What was your moment? My technical moment? I don't know. It's pretty hard to say, but I would, I would say just Caitlin's short program in general. Also, I guess to steal your answer, when, when the combo happened, cause you knew that was going to be the thing. Mm -hmm. um, right. It was it was really nice to see that technically. Well, so. I'm gonna go Russian and be very Johnny Weir and say that my moment was Zagitova's triple lutz triple loop because she missed the first combo and is one mentally strong woman and pulled it off later in the program thinking on her feet and I thought that's great coaching because she probably does that and she misses it usually and that's a mentally strong girl and i like that that was a that was a katarina vit 87 world moment for me i was yeah right. as if katarina could have ever tried that combo <laughs> but when you look at again the quality of the two jumps even though it's it is harder to do the loop she still didn't land with enough speed compared to caitlin that she didn't cover as much ice like if you look at from a technical point of view, if you look at it's called a time motion study. So if you were to plot and 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 follow Caitlin on the ice for her program, and you'd compare her to the other girls, so you call it a time motion study. I'm sure Kurt Caitlin skated much further than the other girls, like uh, as far as mileage went on her program. I'm sure she mm -hmm. did a lot more, almost I'd say a third more. Uh, coverage of the ice than the than the other two girls at the top. That's interesting. I think we're going to yeah. need to start measuring this. I think the ISU can offer points. Perhaps uh, we could offer we can add miles to the components at the end. I think <laughs> and they could get you know travel points. You yes, know? they can upgrade their PCS if they cash in all their. Miles. <laughs> but it's true. You have to think of that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Look, how, I was watching the speed how, skating last night. I saw those girls, those South Koreans, elbowing their way to the front and that mass start, and there were the speed laps. I was like, oh, Tom Z would be all over this. And actually, speaking of South Koreans, even though her skating is not something in particular that I will seek out, but Dobin Choi Excuse or Choi. Me, I like Dobin Choi. I thought she was very lovely here. So I, I thought I was really happy for her because I thought she had two very nice skates and what a great moment. So on a sentimental value, I, I thought I, I was really happy for her. I, I call I call that a very nice skate. And when people say nice, they really should just say beige. Yes. Because she didn't do anything wrong and she didn't do anything really outstanding, but that was very nice. It was In opera, we say lovely. Lovely. Yes. lovely. Yeah, and it was a nice moment for her. So I was appreciative. very happy for her. with Una Kim looking at her and and, oh, and you know, <laughs> doing the politely clapping very slowly like this. I thought it was very. It's like when you watch the Paradise Free Dance, you're like, that was very nice, very nice. You know, yeah. <laughs> you finish that program. <laughs> yeah, you did it. Yeah.
There you go. Well, I guess there's no other way to say it than when you're skating at the Olympics, hold an edge and try not to look so nice. <laughs> Bye, guys. Wow.